Now let's move to the temperature conversion. So please write this on your index card, okay, how you're going to convert uh, temperature, okay? From Celsius to Fahrenheit, you use this formula, okay? So in Celsius to Fahrenheit, you're actually uh, decreasing the value. Oh uh, no, you, you are actually increasing the value, I mean, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay, from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you are decreasing the value. For Celsius to Kelvin, uh, 0 Kelvin, 0, Kel or zero, uh, 0 degree Celsius, okay? 0 degree Celsius, okay, is actually how many Kelvin? That is 273.15 uh, Kelvin, okay? So, 0 degree Celsius is equivalent to 273.15 Kelvin, okay? So, in order for you to convert Celsius to Kelvin, you just add 273.15. For Kelvin to Celsius, you just you just subtract it with 273.15. From Fahrenheit to Kelvin, uh, you need to convert Fahrenheit first to Celsius, okay? Because you have no uh, direct conversion for it. So, you need to convert Fahrenheit first to Celsius. Then, from Celsius, you can convert, convert it to Kelvin. That's why you have this kind of conversion. This is actually coming from your uh, conversion to Celsius, okay? Then after that, you add 273 in order for you to convert, to convert it to Kelvin. So put all of this conversion in your uh, index card, okay? So that you will be guided. Okay, like for example, uh, convert 115 degree Fahrenheit to equivalent Celsius and Kelvin, okay? So, first, we are going to convert 115 degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. So, what would be our conversion from degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius? Okay? So, you have degree, Fahrenheit, degree Celsius would be equal to... So, from degree Fahrenheit to Celsius, you are actually decreasing the value. So, that becomes uh, five, 5 over 9. Okay? That would be degree Fahrenheit minus 32. Okay? Minus 32. Then, uh, 5 over 9, okay, uh, you just substitute the value for degree Fahrenheit, that would be 115, okay, minus 32, okay, then you use your calculator, okay, so 115 minus 32, you multiply it with 5, okay, then you divide it by 9, then you will get 46.11 okay so for, for 46 degree celsius okay this would now be your or 46.11 okay so if you are going to use the 0.15 in kelvin you will use the 46.11 if you are going to use the 273 uh, value in kelvin then you can say it's 46 degree celsius okay it's other way around okay so if you're going to convert this into kelvin then the Kelvin should be uh, 46.11 uh, degrees Celsius plus 273.15, okay? 273.15. Then, you can now get the answer which is actually 319, 319.26 Kelvin. So, this is now your answer. So, you have the Celsius temperature and your Kelvin temperature. Okay? So, you can pause this video and try to answer number 2. Okay? So, for number 2, you convert 30 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit scale. Okay? Our conversion for Fahrenheit. So, from degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, you are actually increasing the uh, value of it. Okay? So, that becomes 9 over 5 degrees Celsius plus 32. Okay? And you substitute the given. Okay, 9 over 5, okay, you multiply it with 30, 30, then you add 32, okay? So, so that this becomes 30 times 9 divided by 5, that becomes 54, okay, am I right? Yes, okay, plus 32, that becomes 86, okay? So, the answer would now be 86 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, this is now the conversion of 30 degrees Celsius is just equal to degree 86 degree Fahrenheit. Okay? 
Now, let's go to the last one, which is actually density. So, when we say density, it's actually the mass, uh, density of an object is equal to the mass divided by the volume of that object. So, it is expressed in this formula, you have density is equal to mass over volume, okay? If the density is unknown, the mass is actually given and the volume is given in order for you to convert uh, to to find the density of that object. If the mass is unknown, okay, if the mass is unknown, you can actually get the mass by multiplying density, okay, density times the volume, okay, density times the volume. Okay, we can also rewrite this na lang. We can rewrite this as density is equal to m over v. Okay? Okay, we can, in, uh, we can use the symbols. Okay, so you can get the mass by multiplying density times volume. Okay? Or if the volume is unknown, you can get the volume by uh, mass divided by the density. Okay? So these are the these are now the formulas in order for you to get the unknowns. Okay? If the density is unknown, then you can simply divide mass by its volume to get the density. If the mass is unknown, then you can multiply density times the volume in order for you to get the mass. And if the volume is unknown, then you can divide mass by its density in order for you to get the volume. Okay, example problem. So, a 5.0 a ml of water weighs 5.0 grams. What is the density of water in gram per ml? So, remember the given is you have the volume, which is actually 5.0 ml, okay? Then, you have the mass, which is in grams, that is actually 5.0 grams, okay? Then, what is the density in terms of gram per ml. You know that the density is mass over volume. You just substitute it with the given. The mass is 5.0 ml. Okay? Divided by uh, 5.0 grams. Then you can have the density of water which is 1.0 uh, ah. Wait, wait, wait. <coughs> Mass is 5.0 grams. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. Okay, this is 5.0 grams and this is in ml. I'm sorry. Okay, 1.0 gram per uh, ml. Okay. So, this is now the density in grams per ml. And since it says what is also the density in grams per liter, then we can convert 1.0 grams per ml into grams per liter. So, that we can only convert the volume. Okay, since you have 1 liter, 1 liter is actually 1,000 ml, okay? You have 1 liter is 1,000 ml, then you can convert ml to liter. Okay, so you multiply this with our conversion factor. You notice that your ml is actually found at the denominator, so you need to put the ml at the new main. Rator. So, therefore, 1,000 ml should be there at the numerator and your 1 liter should be at the denominator. For you to cancel out the units, then that means the equivalent uh, answer should be 1 times 1,000, that is 1,000 uh, grams, okay, per liter, okay? So, the remaining unit is grams, grams divided by liter. So, this is now your answer in gram per liter. Okay? The second problem is about the density of the solids. Okay? So, how do we get the density of the solids? Number two, if a small rectangular slab of lithium weighs 1.49 times 10 to the third milligram and has a size that measures 20.9 mm by 11.1 mm by 11.9 mm, what is the density of the lithium in gram? per cubic centimeter, okay? So, you notice that we have mass of that lithium, which is actually 1.49 times 10 to the cube to the third power milligram, okay? 
but the volume we don't have okay we don't have the volume but we have the dimension of the rectangular a slab of lithium and to get the rectangle a volume of the rectangular slab we use the formula then times width times the height of that rectangular slab so that you will just say that this is actually length width and the height of that rectangular slab okay that becomes 20.9 mm okay times uh, 11 0.1 mm okay times 11.9 mm okay 11.9 mm okay then you multiply that three dimensions that would be 20.9 times 11.1 times 11.9 that becomes 2760 okay 0.681 okay the unit now is actually mm times mm times mm that becomes cubic mm, okay? So, the unit becomes cubic mm. Okay, so you now have the volume. Okay, I will erase this. Okay, the mass now is the given. So, you have the mass. This is 1.49 cubic, uh, one time, 1.49 times 10 to the third mg. And the volume is, what is our volume? 1,000. One, uh, 2,000, I mean 2,760, sorry for that, 2,760.681 cubic mm, okay? Cubic mm. Now you go to the density, which is mass over volume, because you have already the mass and the volume. Okay, the mass is 1.49, okay, times 10, to the third uh, mg okay then the volume is divided by 2760.681 okay cubic mm so so that your answer becomes okay uh, 1.49 times 10 to the third Okay, 1.49 times 10 to the third divided by 2760.681. The answer is actually 0 0.5, 5, 0 0.5, that is 5, okay, 5, 3, 5, 40. Okay, we will just, uh, we will just, we will just round it off, okay? So, 0 0.540 milligrams per cubic mm, okay? So, we are not yet done, okay? Because the problem says that what is the density of the lithium in gram per cubic cm? So, we need to convert that into gram per cubic cm, okay? So, our density is 0 0.540 gram, a milligram per cubic mm, okay? We need to convert that. We knew that, okay, 1,000 milligram is actually, 1,000 milligram is actually 1 gram. Okay, in order for us to convert milligrams to grams, because our unit in at the top or the numerator is in grams. Then you multiply it by the conversion factor for uh, mm cube to cm cube, okay? We don't have... But if you have already the, the conversion to mm to cm cube, you can actually go directly to it. Because actually, it, it has 10 mm. 10 mm is actually 1 cm. Okay? That is actually the conversion. But you need to cube it. Okay? Because it is in cubic. For you to cancel this, and you need to cube the 10. That is 10 cube is, that is 1,000. Okay, and then this becomes cube, and that becomes cube, and this becomes 1,000, okay? Because 10 cube is 1,000. Then you can now cancel CM cube, and uh, not CM cube, okay? Not CM cube, because that is your desired unit, okay? You can cancel now cubic C, 
cubic mm to cubic mm, then milligram to milligram, then you have the final unit of gram per cm cube, okay? So, you need to multiply 0 0.540 times 1,000, okay? Then you divide it by 1,000, okay? You divide it by 1,000, then you, are, you can actually get with the same uh, unit, which is actually 0. Point, uh, with the same number, 0 0.540 gram per cm cube. And that's it. This is now your final answer, okay?